stand still now. Don't you do it on there. Stand still now. Don't you do it on there. Stand still now. No. Stop. No, I can't. Stop. Put that knife down now. Put it down. Put it down. Put it down. Put it down. Yeah, Delta Delta 2, I have the suspect secured. I am fine on my own. Everyone else. You are next, mother. There is a bond on your head. I'm, I'm fine here, mate. The knife next. is there. You are right. next. Can you just check, canvas these people and check this is the only suspect? The only yeah, suspect, no, just canvas here. The <laughs> He's dead, did not he? I warned you, the police, one year. Look, it happened. The idiot imbeciles. I was in special forces, you I warned them. I was gonna murder him. <laughs> Could you please with the same cut the front down? Right, dying. are you happy to tell me your name now? I think I know what it is, but you haven't actually told me. What's your name, please? So I'm gonna search you. Okay. So what we're searching you for is anything that can harm us, anything that can harm you, or anything that could aid your escape, okay? He is dead and I've been begging the police one year. I was gonna murder him. Because he was against my son, my wife. <laughs> Look, I am begging you, could you put this in front? No, unfortunately we can't. That's not in our policy. I have disability, don't you believe? I do, I do believe you, but I don't believe that they're causing you any harm, and it's proportionate. They are, I have arthritis. Right, okay, it's proportionate to the Look effects at the that they suspect. You, you mother Look. Like I'm with the 10 people. So there's a bond on your head as what well. What is it, a lighter? Yeah. Hey, there's no point frightening us, is there? Yeah. It's not going to get you anywhere. Get in the van. Yeah. It's not getting you anywhere. Yeah. 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 Can Arslan 52 attack father of three Matthew Barman as he arrived home from work, knifing him 27 times in Walton, Cardiff, Gloucestershire on October the 5th last year? Arslan has subjected Mr Barman, 43 and other residents of the new build development, to years of threats and abuse and had been charged with harassment just a week before the killing. Jurors at Arslan's murder trial at Bristol Crown Court saw a compilation of video clips taken on the day of Mr Barman's killing some of which have been released by police after it was played in court, including footage taken from the body-worn cameras of the officers who arrested him. Earlier, jurors were told Mr Barman had spoken of feeling very scared of what Arslan might do and did not know what he's capable of. Mr Barman had made his statements on May 13th last year and said he lived next door to Arslan since 2013 with his neighbour calling him Hitler and a cocksucker. He detailed the contents of a 30 minute telephone conversation he heard Arslan making the previous evening. I could hear Mr Arslan speaking in his garden in a raised voice and could make out he was making reference to being arrested last Tuesday Mr Barman said. I believe Mr Arslan was on the phone to someone or pretending to be and immediately caused me to be frustrated at this as this is what Mr Arslan has been doing for the last two years and also why he's currently on police bail conditions not to have direct or indirect contact with my household. I remember certain things which were said on these phone calls. Mr Arslan was speaking in such a loud voice that I could clearly hear what he was saying. Some of the comments are, he likes being arrested. He is unhinged. He misses prison food. God forgives, but I will not forget. 
He referenced to an incident in 2009 when he assaulted someone after a road raid incident and put them in intensive care. If he would have killed that guy, he would be out by now. He talks about hoping he will go to prison and how he'll get out early because he's unhinged. Mr. Barman said Arslan also referred to Hitler, which he assumed was a reference to him. He went on, due to ongoing issues, hearing this from Mr. Arslan caused me to feel very intimidated and concerned for the safety of myself and my family. He was in the back garden whilst on the phone saying these things. I believe he was well aware I may be hearing his conversations and the aim of doing this was to cause myself to feel alarmed and distressed as well as to continually harass my family. I am very alarmed he made references in his conversations about missing prison and wanting to be arrested. I genuinely fear his conversation was meant to be overheard by us to let us know he isn't scared of police, is willing to go to prison and when he's released he won't forget about the incident. I also believe he's trying to intimidate us into not making complaints to police. I am very scared of what Mr Arslan can do. He makes, re he makes reference to being ex-special forces and has made threats previously of rape. This week, he has taken many images of my daughter's bedrooms. I don't know what he's capable of and this causes myself and my wife to be continually anxious regarding the nature of Mr Arslan. Mr Borman, who worked for engineering firm GE Aviation, had just returned from work when Arslan stabbed him. His wife Sarah witnessed the whole attack and tried to pull Arslan off her husband, suffering a deep wound to her thigh as a result. After the killing, Arslan forced his way into the home of Peter Marsden and stabbed him eight times, although Mr Marsden eventually managed to wrestle him out of the property. The day before the attack, a police officer had telephoned Arslan about the complaint he had made. He informed the officer he would sort his neighbour out himself, adding he would murder him, the jar heard. Arslan admitted the attempted murder of Mr Marsden, causing grievous bodily harm to Mr Borsman and the charge of a fray, but denies murder, claiming he was in the grip of a psychiatric disorder. Yeah, that's it, people. Like, comment, check back for more, yeah? Peace.